Hello everyone, it's Eric from Strong Medicine. For those of you who have not been here before, I'm a practicing hospitalist and faculty at Stanford School of Medicine. I know I said that vertigo was going to be the next topic I talked about on here, but how can I not talk about coronavirus today when it feels like the rest of the internet is? Keep in mind that information on this is changing daily, so some of what I'm saying on this video will likely be out of date pretty quickly. Before talking about the current outbreak, let's first ask more generally, what is coronavirus? It may feel like a scary brand new disease, but that's only sort of true. Coronaviruses have been around a long time. You may have even had one yourself. You see, coronaviruses are an entire family of viruses, specifically enveloped RNA viruses. We've known about them for over 50 years. Some can cause no human disease, while others can cause a variety of respiratory illnesses. These viruses have an animal reservoir, particularly bats. They are named coronavirus, not based on the Mexican beer, but rather on their appearance under an electron microscope, as corona is the Latin word for crown. The most common coronaviruses, which in routine clinical practice are usually just collectively referred to as plain old coronavirus, is one cause of the common cold and can less commonly cause viral pneumonia or trigger exacerbations of COPD. However, there are some other previously known coronaviruses that are not so benign. The two big ones are the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, responsible for SARS, and the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, responsible for MERS. To understand what might come of the current outbreak of a coronavirus, it's helpful to look at previous outbreaks. SARS, for example, originated in China in, the, uh, in late 2002, and the subsequent worldwide outbreak sickened 8,000 people, of whom 800 died. But within nine months, the virus was gone. Since 2003, there have been only four outbreaks, three of which originated in labs studying SARS, and all of which involved fewer than 10 people. The animal host responsible for the original SARS outbreak has not been definitively identified, but is believed to be either bats or an animal called a palm civet, a cat-like animal consumed as a delicacy in China. MERS was first reported in Saudi Arabia in 2012. Unlike SARS, which had a single large outbreak and then disappeared, MERS has seen about 10 or so relatively small outbreaks, all of which have been centered in Saudi Arabia, except for one in South Korea in 2015. Camels appear to be the primary host for MERS. Overall, since 2012, when MERS ar uh, arrived, there have been 2,500 cases and 850 deaths, making MERS significantly more deadly than SARS. With both SARS and MERS, transmission could be either animal to human or human to human via contact with respiratory droplets, for example, being in close contact with an infected person who is sneezing or coughing, very similar to influenza healthcare workers were at a particularly high risk of infection. So now, why is coronavirus back in the news? Well, an outbreak of what appears to be a newly discovered coronavirus has been detected in China. It's currently being referred to as Novel Coronavirus 2019, though a different permanent name is likely to come along soon. Let's go through a timeline of recent events. In mid-December, multiple cases emerged of an acute febrile respiratory illness among employees at the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market in Wuhan, a Chinese city of about 11 million people. Although it was called a seafood market, this place also sold a large number of live land animals. I've seen reports of, of everything from chickens to bats to even live deer. It was like a paradise for animal viruses looking to make a species jump into humans. On December the 31st, a cluster of 20 plus cases of pneumonia of unknown etiology was reported to the World Health Organization. January 1st, the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market in Wuhan was closed for, quote, environmental sanitation and disinfection. On the 2nd, the WHO's incident management system was activated. The CDC issued an alert for clinicians in the U.S. to be on the lookout for patients with respiratory symptoms and recent travel to Wuhan. On the 9th, the WHO confirmed the outbreak is caused by a new coronavirus. The 11th brought the first death. And then on the 13th, first case was reported in Thailand, 
which was, of course, the first case outside of China. On the 16th, reported in Japan. On the 17th, the CDC began public health entry screening at SFO, JFK, and LAX airports here in the States, followed shortly afterwards by airports in Atlanta and Chicago. On the 20th, the first case was reported in South Korea. And then yesterday, on the 21st, the first cases have been reported in Taiwan and in the U.S. The U.S. case is located in Washington State, occurring in a traveler who had returned from Wuhan on January the 15th. There is also at least one suspected but not yet confirmed case in the Philippines. As of today, January the 22nd, there have been about 500 confirmed cases in total, all but a small handful of which are in China. As of right now, the CDC and WHO are reporting that there have been nine confirmed deaths, while Chinese authorities and Chinese media are currently reporting that there have been about 17. The coronavirus was initially believed to be spread, or sorry, this coronavirus was initially believed to be spread only by animal to person contact, as all initial cases were linked to the one specific animal market. But it's now believed that person to person spread is occurring, as was true with SARS and with MERS, as some patients of novel coronavirus 2019 deny ever visiting the animal market in question. A thorough description of the clinical syndrome caused by novel coronavirus 2019 is still a work in progress, but has been reported to include fever, cough, and shortness of breath with bilateral infiltrates on chest x-ray, all of which is pretty nonspecific. While a low white blood cell count and a high LDH were somewhat distinctive lab findings in SARS, as of yet I have not found any description of the abnormalities of conventionally available labs with this outbreak. Luckily, the CDC already has a test for novel coronavirus. It's a reverse transcriptase PCR test that for now requires samples of suspected patients to be flown to the CDC, though they are working on making the test more broadly available as soon as possible. As with SARS and MERS, and yes, as with the common cold, there are no known effective treatments for novel coronavirus 2019 aside from supportive care, meaning oxygen, intravenous fluids for those unable to receive oral intake, and mechanical ventilation for those patients who develop respiratory failure. There is a report in the news that at least one patient has been successfully treated with ECMO. Now, when it comes to the general public, people are, well, they're starting to freak out a little bit online. There's a lot of misinformation and already conspiracy theories as to the virus's origin. A little bit tamer than that, I came across this tweet yesterday from someone claiming that a suggested semi-quarantine of Wuhan is a, quote, day late and a dollar short. But considering that the United States struggled to determine whether or not they should even quarantine a single person during the 2014 Ebola outbreak, I think we should cut some slack for a city of 11 million. Having said that, the public health response in the next few weeks will be critically important in containing the outbreak. Once an affected patient comes to the hospital, you know, symptomatic, and they see someone like myself, the, the doctors and nurses, the best thing we can do is to avoid becoming infected ourselves. But public health officials, you know, screening travelers, quarantining those potentially affected, um, studying transmission patterns, working on tests, maybe even working on a vaccine, and other protective equipment, uh, and distributing masks and other protective equipment to high-risk individuals, that's what's going to help here. Um, and so that's where all the efforts have to be really be focused, is, is on pre preventing transmission. There is still much uncertainty about novel coronavirus 2019. Will it act more like SARS with a single large outbreak and then vanish, or more like MERS with a number of small outbreaks over years, or act altogether differently? And thanks for watching. Stay healthy.